Hi, today we're tying a euphoric muddler. This is just on a 3x long, 1x heavy, down eye hook. So the idea with this is it can be fished as a skater with a riffle hitch or just you know traditionally fished or on a sink tip even. So it's got a little muddler collar and not a real heavy bunch of deer hair and it fishes great as a wet fly in the film or as a skater. Um, so we're going to start with some 6 aught thread. And I usually start my thread about where I want to start the collar for my hair. So that way I know what I have to work with for the body. A couple strands of pearl flashaboo as a tag. If you want to make these durable, lay down just a touch of zappa gap before you get going with it. Generally no more than two strands because they'll split and splay and go crazy on you. Just as that hook starts to bend, and I'm going to go over and rewrap my way forward. The next step is a little bit of this midge body thread is going to make the body for this muddler. It's a real real slender body. This color happens to be called Rust. I'm actually just going to coat the body, the hook of the uh, shank of the hook with thread. That's going to make a nice base for putting this down. We'll go over that mylar tag just a couple of turns. And you'll notice as I advance forward, I'll put a couple of wraps back over it, and this just builds an ever so slight taper to the body. going to be in two stages. The first will be a pheasant rump and that's going to be a quarter to three eighths inch longer than the hook bend and then our secondary hackle is going to be a tan <coughs> tan dyed um, wood duck flank and that's going to be just right around the hook bend. Use a hackle a little bit. Poor man's hackle folder. There's one full turn. Two full turns. If you see some shorties, just take them out along the way. Okay, so you can see the length on that goes maybe 3 inches or so past the bend of the hook. That's just perfect. And this happens to be a size 6. I generally like these in 6s and 8s. So they really fish more like 2s and 6s. Or excuse me, 2s and 4s. A little bit longer. Now is a good time. We use two pieces of pearl flash blue again. Instead of tying one in and doubling it back because I want two pieces, sometimes they have a little bit of a curvature to it. So I want the curved side down. I know that's how this naturally wants to lay. Some of it's more limp than others. Hello. Get this 
situated right over the top. Just put a couple of wraps down, bend the tags over, that locks them. These guys you can just leave long and trim later. Okay, our next tackle is going to be that tan wood duck. And I've stripped one side of it, we want a little bit less hackle here. And so important, to, especially if you're stripping one side of the wood duck, it tends to lay back wet fly style really nicely and easily without having to do the folding. Two to three turns. Might just go one extra, that was a pretty sparse feather. Okay, so now we're going to put on. Our little muddler head and that's going to be a golden tan spinning deer. You can use a spinning elk if you like, just find a piece that flares nicely as a key. <clears throat> so the longest these two little flash guys are going to wiggle out there off the back so we'll just cut those just a little longer than everything else. Okay, one of the things I've learned about spinning hair is you get just a light base of thread down and when you're first spinning the clump it's nice to have a whip finish right at the point of the first spin that creates a collar so that the thread doesn't want to walk and move forward. With this done, I'll try to do this for the camera. Well, we're really only looking for one medium pinch of hair. We're not looking for a really heavily packed muddler head. And I'll thin down from there as we take the under fur out and some of the short hairs. And quickly and inspect for any broken tips. That looks pretty good. Yeah, this is kind of important for the amount of hair. This is a, I believe in a small, medium, and large, this is a large size stacker. That's a little bit light on the deer hair. I just like that, that it's loosely packed in there and you guys can see a little bit of void. So I'm gonna add a little bit more hair to it. Okay, so once we got our deer packed and prepped, I wanna measure the collar. And drive that right into the hook. One soft wrap over the top of that whip finish. A second loose wrap. Start to apply some tension and as that happens we're just going to gently and slowly let go of that hair and just keep applying the tension to flare it. Okay so from here and this is one nice reason why you want to cut those, I could have even cut those t tails a little bit shorter. But I want to wind through that deer hair to really lock it onto the hook. And the shorter these are, then you can manage them, the less chance you have of trapping deer fiber, which will show up as a void after the trim. So I'll just work through that. Okay. It looks like I did trap a few in there. Build a little thread ahead. Okay, so now for the trim process. These are for double-edged razor blades. 
You can find them at Kmart. Lots of different variety stores will have these double edge packages. And for a lot of this, you probably won't be able to see on the video, but I'm going to cut it flat off the bottom, cut through the guards, and through some of that wood duck and pheasant body um, hackle so you can see through into that midge body braid. And on the top of it, we're going to vault that razor pretty aggressively and then do a nice taper cut to it to finish a muddler head. So we'll be back in a second and show you a finished trim on one of these. Okay, so we've done the bulk of the trim work. Just a couple of finishing cuts here. And there we go. Now what you end up with is something that's fairly flat on the bottom, a little taper cut, then a nice wide head so it's going to spit water if you riffle hitch it. And on the bottom side, we've actually gone through and taken out the collar. I'm going to take a little bit more of that pheasant rump and wood duck out. So we just, there we go. I want to see that body glint through there. And there's a finished euphoric muddler. Let me put that back in the vise for you guys so you can take a look at it. There you go, fairly simple fly and very effective.